So welcome to the first edition of our selection series. Jasmine, you had the privilege of choosing the first movie that you tortured me with. How dare you make me watch a movie with subtitles? I don't know what you're talking about. That movie was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you a weeb anyway so you like subtitles? <sighs> that is so hurtful. I mean... I'm definitely team sub, but there are some plebs out there that are team dub. Whatever you said. Look, everyone can get behind Dragon Ball Z, Inuyasha, and Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh my god, that's like the basic bitches of anime. Anyway... Do you always like to watch movies with subtitles? Not always, uh, but I find that movies from other countries, they their plot lines are so much more interesting than what we get out of Hollywood anymore. Yeah, I've only seen a few movies. I'm not exactly like a foreign film aficionado or anything. I did see a movie called Roma, black and white, really, really gorgeous shots. It's great. And I saw another foreign movie. It was called Border. And it's about trolls. It might be a good one for this show. But I said I wanted to do a back and forth with movies. I said you could go first. And what did you pick? I picked the Mimic. How did you hear about this movie? Did you just stumble upon it? Well, I like to watch a lot of Ending Explained videos and uh, movie reviews, like movie recaps and stuff like that. And I saw one on the Mimic, and then after about a minute or two, I said, this movie's way too good to spoil. So I immediately turned off the video and watched the actual movie. I was curious about what this movie had on Rotten Tomatoes. 78? I think it has like an 83. Oh. And when I saw that, personally, I thought that was too high. Really? If I were to give this wh what I would give it, like on a percentage scale like that, I would probably put it in the mid-50s, personally. That's all? God, you really hated it, huh? No, I didn't hate it. But I did see that of that Rotten Tomatoes score, there was, I think there was only like seven critic scores, right? Mm. And... Six of them were positive, and one of them was negative. And I found myself agreeing with the negative one. What did it say? It said pretty much some cool Im images here and there, but it's just tropes galore. I'm sure because how you feel about slasher movies, right? You can think about the the tropes that maybe roll your eyes out. Why did she fall down? Like, look away. Why don't they just drive away? And, you know, it kind of, like, irritates you a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So I have that with Supernatural movies. So the entire time I'm watching it, I'm just thinking this is like, like tropes the movie, essentially. Like, Well, first it starts out with a cliche where they're driving along and they run over that dog. <laughs> but I will say, before we actually get into the plot, I would give this a thumbs up. I would give it a recommendation. But... If I were to be somewhat condescending, I would say I would be like, the visuals are cool, but as far as like story structure, to me, this is like a typical Hollywood movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. So we start off with a lovely, uh, no, they're not even a couple because they get the wife's in the trunk. <laughs> A man and his mistress. Yeah, and they drive, and there's a brick wall. It's the entrance to a cave, and that's where the mimic lives, right? Yeah. So 
so first off, I remember when we first talked about it and you said you wanted to do the Mimic. I was like, well, which one? Did Guillermo del Toro make a movie called The Mimic or Mimic? Yeah, it's like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Which one? <laughs> Looking at the the cover before we started the box art. And I thought we were going to get some boogeyman Babadook kind of rip off <laughs> or something. You know, is Bagul going to show up? <laughs> that kind of thing. I thought there was some really good shots in this movie. There was some kind of care taken. I don't really have a problem with the opening. I thought the, the actual start of the mimicking where... <laughs> He's mimicking his wife, who I guess. So, so explain that scene to me. What's going on? Okay, so the guy and his mistress are driving. They come to the wall covering the tunnel. They start uncovering it, like busting the bricks in front of it. They were planning on killing his wife and putting her in there, since nobody would think to look. <laughs> Um, but after a hole in the wall, that's apparently all it takes to let out the mimic. (laughs) Then we kind of get into this family who... I think I think there's a shot where they're moving into they're bright brand new moving into that house, right? Yeah. Okay. That's my cliche number two. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't like the wife. I mean, she was the one driving the movie. I know, and I hated her. Why? Of course, she had to have this thing that ties specifically to like what the mimic would do. She she has to have this this thing of oh, we lost our son. Spoilers. She is perfect for mimic bait, and, I, and to me, it, it just felt a little contrived and forced. <laughs> Honestly, I think it could have been anyone because the mimic only mimics people that are dead. Everyone has some dead loved one. Yeah, I know, but if it's been that long, she's still like in the grieving process. Like she's just perfect for this situation to happen. I suppose, but I mean, even if even if a uh, relative had been dead for like years, say you're out in the woods or whatever, and you hear like their voice, like you know it's their voice. And they're calling your name specifically. Barring horror movie knowledge, you know, aside. Wouldn't you wonder what was going on and possibly go to investigate? So we've talked about the beginning. We've talked about wife. Mm -hmm. Now, now of course, we have to have the, the straight man husband. Who's, who's barely in the movie. <laughs> I know, what happened to him? <laughs> I think he died. No. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that grandma had more scenes. Yeah, I think she did, actually. <laughs> yeah. So the mom, she's she's outside, and these two kids come up, and they hand her a flyer uh, with a picture of their missing dog. They come across the cave opening or tunnel opening. The girl ends up getting pulled in through the hole by the mimic we haven't actually seen that the titular mimic just yet right but there's a shot like because she takes her phone out Mm -hmm. and here comes another problem with me what okay 
So she takes her phone out. She's like, eh, what's in there? To, and, oh, I can't see or anything. And then there's a shot where it looks like she, with the flashlight of her phone, it shows like this creepy, like decrepit hand. And that took, <laughs> and that like took me back to the, the poster. Cause I'm like, oh, is, you know, is this some kind of like boogeyman thing? Cause I still don't know really what I'm in store for. Anyway, so she has the cell phone. And then as soon as she's about to get that closer look, someone calls her or something, or she drops it, like something like that cell phone. I'm like, oh, gosh, so annoying. And then she gets sucked in, and then she's like, oh, I thought she's dead. Then no, she's good. The mom, she finds a like hand mirror, and it's all taped up. Yeah. And for some reason, she's like compelled to pick it up and to take all of the tape off of it and just stare at herself. And she happens to, you know, see in the reflection, there's a little girl. Is this where, yeah, because after, after they do that, they find the wife in the, from the beginning. Because she's still alive or something, right? Or they find her body? They found the girlfriend. The girlfriend uh, was back there. I guess the mimic grabbed her at some point, and she was still alive. The wife was dead. Okay. Because that's why we heard the mimic mimicking the wife, because she was dead by that point. Mm. Okay. We bring in cop. Cop man. <laughs> the cop gets called. Um, cause they find the girlfriend slash mistress <laughs> the whole time the wife is going, where did that little girl go? She was here just a minute ago. Yeah, so they go home and then that night it starts storming all of a sudden there's this knock at the door and it's a little girl i love how you know my favorite character the wife so for some reason she cannot sense that bullshit is afoot <laughs> she's just like no you can stay here tonight we'll get you a bath and and something to eat and put you to bed and it's like uh yeah you can totally get arrested for that <laughs> <laughs> because even the husband said at one point didn't she didn't he say like at what point are you going to call the police about this kid 경찰에 연락했지? 경찰? 신고 안 했어? 어, 아직. 아직? And it seems like she's, I don't want to say in a way replacing her lost son, but I guess he, she's kind of, uh, the little girl's kind of fi filling a void, you know, that the mom had um, after losing her son. Yeah, it kind of feels like they're missing puzzle pieces from each other. Yeah. So they just they just fit. Yeah. Yeah. So this whole time, the couple has um, a daughter. And where in the world was the daughter the whole time they were out running around in the woods? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> They, I guess they just left C now mom to, to babysit just like she babysat the son and that's how he went missing. <laughs> Damn, that's dark. We find out that the daughter's name is Jun Hee. Oh, my name's Jun Hee. Huh. I forgot all about that. And what as, a coincidence. Yeah, as soon as I heard that, I was screaming eternally. <laughs> so, you want to talk about maybe the, the ritual? Okay, you just really want to get into this, huh? <laughs> I want to get to the I want to get to the good stuff. But first, we have to talk about the blind lady because she's the one who kind of you know sets up what happened. She just randomly shows up and like 
scares everyone because they're like, who are you and why are you on our property? <laughs> Just acting crazy. And all she said is, if you hear someone uh, who you know is dead calling out to you, don't ever answer. So then she starts talking about this legend of the tiger that uh, that li- that lives in the mountain that possesses a shaman. It's all one thing. The tiger is the mimic. <laughs> Do you want to explain the mirrors? Okay, so the mirrors are like portals. It lets the mimic in. So you tape up the mirror and the mimic can't get through. Grandma was hearing uh, the voice of her uh, dead brother and sister. And... I don't think she knew exactly what was up, but she knew something wasn't right. And she knew to tape up the mirror because that shit was coming from the mirror. So it took grandma, it took dad, and tried to take the little girl, but she ran away. So how would you describe how the mimic looks in this movie? Well, throughout most of it, um, he looks like the shaman that he possessed. And then at some point he, like the shaman, his eyes go all crazy and then like fur grows out of his face. And he's just something I would never want to like run into in the middle of the night. <laughs> I just want to go into what I think is probably it's probably my favorite scene in the movie where he kind of manifests himself out of the the mirror. It's like this black goo mm-hmm. and like he starts like whispering in her ear. I mm-hmm. think it's his, it's uh, the husband's voice. Yeah. And I just I don't know because you know the entire movie because I even the the mimic is it looks like practical effects like no no CGI I don't think yeah. that, like makeup and stuff like that and then that was the only scene that had CGI that I think hmm. I could be wrong I'm pretty sure that's the only at least it caught my eye I thought it was very well done I don't know what you think about that but I think it was well done it was I mean I think any of the mirror scenes had at least like a touch of CGI but they didn't overdo it which is the most important thing. Yeah. It's like CGI can definitely enhance a horror movie, but you just cannot overdo it. It's like, you know, enhance the monster, but do not create the monster entirely out of CGI. That's just never going to work. Can you explain the blinding? Okay. So the longer... um you know, the mimic has influence over you. So the longer you're around the little girl or the mimic's coming after you, like trying to, uh, you know, mimic your dead relatives and stuff and try and get you to get close enough to get got. Um, <laughs> it's, it's slowly like stealing your energy. And the longer it's around, um, like it's trying to break down your defense. And so... Your eyesight is directly tied to that energy. Once your energy, you know, dips low, then your vision starts to go. They're in the cave. Mimic can go through mirrors. It can squeeze through holes, climb and stuff like that. You get that great shot where... She turns around and just sees the mimic mimicking his voice and just holds on it. Like his eyes are red. It was really good shot. Yeah. It was a really good shot. <laughs> Do you remember when she's like climbing for her life and then she takes a cell phone call while she's climbing for her yeah. life? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe that the first time I, I watched that movie. I'm like, you're in the middle of climbing, you know, away from your imminent death. And now's the time to answer a cell phone i mean that i mean that's why she's i hate her 
can we just get to the end? Like in terms of like, so they're, they're going through because, you know, they're, they're running from the cave is like the Scooby Doo thing of like them trying to get away. So they're climbing up the stairs. They're trying to get out, right? Yeah. Okay. And and the little girl, you know, she's like, oh, don't leave me. You promised you wouldn't leave. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. And, and she starts to get partially, and she's already like starting to get partially blind, right? Yeah. Okay. So they're running up the stairs trying to get out. And then the mimics, the. Is it the son's the, the the missing son's voice? Right, trying to get her one last time. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. After everything that just happened, <laughs> you know. 여보, 왜 거기 숨어 있어? 엄마. 어머니, 괜찮으세요? This creature that mimics. And she just wants to go down and just, you know, she can't see. Uh, she just wants to fill that void. And <sighs> that's just all I have to say. Just <sighs> what, how, what do you feel about the ending? I don't think she was actually tricked or anything by uh, the mimic, like mimicking her son. I think she... She let the disappearance of her son totally consume her to the point where it was her entire being. Like she didn't she didn't have a void that she was trying to fill. She became that void. So when that little girl came into her life and started to kind of you know take take the place of her son kind of you know give her something to focus on, you know, a, I just think that once the mom became so attached to that little girl, she just couldn't live without, you know, band-aid over that, you know, wound of her heart. Yeah. Uh, the husband climb out of the hole, and then they, and then the cop finds him, and then the movie ends. Yeah, because the dad's like, fuck that, I want to live. <laughs> oh, I'm with the dad, man. <laughs> Seriously. The only good character in the whole movie good but no like like i know it sounds like i've been shitting on this movie but i i would recommend it so i guess we'll go to our ratings now so what would you rate it out of 10 with five being the average uh i would definitely rate it an eight out of 10 an eight yes because because it actually like scared me a bit like i swear that that half tiger half shaman dude freaks me the hell out well, I would probably, I'd probably go 6.5. So that was the Mimic. Um, this was the first, like I said, of the selection series. This was Jasmine's <laughs> seminal pick. <laughs> and I gave it a 6.5. And I'm up next. I guess we'll have to see. Stay tuned. I t- already rated a 1. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a good one. See ya.